Hey everyone, Urban Fish Keeper here. I hope you're all having a good weekend and you've had a good week. Today we're going to do something very different to what I've done before. I thought what I'd do today is bring you out to a spot I collected fish probably about six years ago and um, I've come out here early this morning, it's about 8.30 now, uh, about two hours drive from where I live up north and we're going to put some traps in the water and we're going to see what we can find in this river section. There's two sections to this river. There's this part here where we're normally collecting and then there's a wall and then on the other side there is some little pools and we'll go and see what we can find in those pools. So what we'll do now is we're going to set up some traps. I'll just show you quickly as well how I do the traps. We'll lay some in the water, then we'll pull them out. We'll try and get some footage underwater as well um, and then we'll see what we get. I'm hoping to get some ornate rainbow fish. Uh, that's, that's, the key, that's the target that we were trying for. There'll be some smelt, Australian smelt in this water for sure, but it's the ornate rainbows. And then what I'll do as well is do, do the temperature check. We'll check pH. Um, this water is very cold at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see what the temperature is that these rainbows are in. All right, what I'll do is I'll stop it here. We'll grab a trap. I'll show you what I do, and then we'll lay them. All right, so let's have a look. So the traps that I use for this kind of thing are these. I don't know, these little square traps. I think they're meant for, for a freshwater crayfish. Um, and, that's, and that's what the trap looks like. It's quite straightforward. It's got two holes on each side. The fish swim in, lift it out of the water and trap them. Now, there's different things you can use and put in these traps to attract the fish. You can use dog pellets. You can use cat pellets. You can use trout pellets. You can use all those. The thing that I found that works really well um, and maybe it's an Australian thing is um, some fresh or well, not fresh some white bread and then the secret ingredient Vegemite and what you do is I'm gonna get my hands all dirty now, but you take a bit of Vegemite And you smear that on the bread That's it and that then goes into the trap. And then what I do is when the trap goes into the water, I soak it, give it a bit of a, a squish in the water, and uh, it creates particles in the trap and outside of the trap, and that then attracts the fish. So what we'll do now is we'll take this one that's prepped, we'll take it onto the water, we'll drop it in, uh, we'll leave it in for about a half an hour, 50, oh, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, and we'll see what we get. All right, let's go down to the water. Okay, so what I've done is I just dipped the trap into the water and that's really just to get the bread soaked. I then mush the bread up in the bottom of the trap. Um, that's about it. And then I flick the trap out. And that's it, we'll just leave it there for about a half an hour or so, and then we'll see what happens. All right, so this is one of the other traps we've put in. It's a tiny pool um, off the side of where the water's gushing through. Um, and this, it comes into this little quiet spot here. And we've put a trap in there. There's actually been able to see quite a few rainbow fish in here. Uh, it's just a question of whether we get them into the traps. Okay, so we've pulled up the first trap <clears throat> and it's been in for about 15, 20 minutes. And we've definitely got something in there. Um, I'm going to pull them out now and have a look. I'm not too sure if that is actually rainbows or whether that's some invasive uh, species. But I'll pull them out now and we'll have a look. Um, okay, so we've pulled the three out out of that trap. To be honest, I don't think this is the rainbows we were looking for. Um, I'll have a better look when we get home, but this looks to me like those are uh, sawtails, female sawtails. So I hope that's not the case. It's, you know, we're invasive species, but um, we'll, we'll have a better look later. All right, we'll check out the next trap. Okay, so I've pulled out another trap. Um, this trap looks like it's full of the Australian smelt. Uh, I don't want to keep them out of the water too long. So what I'll do is I'll just have a look through the trap quickly. It looks like it could be one or two female uh, rainbows in there as well um, and then I might keep one or two smelt so that I can show you later once they're in a tank um, 
but the rest I'm just going to put straight back now. All right, we'll update you as soon as I have more. Well, guys, we're probably about to depart shortly. Um, I've got a bucket full of, I don't know, 50 fish or so. Uh, the disappointing part of it is it's mostly invasive species. So once I get home and I can sort through it, I'll have a look. I just wanted to show you a bit of what the landscape looks like over here where I'm collecting. Um, really still water on this side and, and this side hasn't produced a lot. Uh, the last time I was here, six years ago, this side produced a lot of rainbows. I'll take you across to the other side where the saw tails have where I've been collecting those. Okay, well there you can see one of my traps. It's in a really shallow pool. The trap's not even fully submerged. Um, this little pool here is where I've actually collected um, a fair amount of mollies. So not only have I got green saw tails here, but I've collected a lot of mollies here. The only indigenous fish um, or naturally occurring that I've found here so far is the smelt and we had tons of those and I've put them all back. Um, the other thing was I think I may have two maybe three of the ornate rainbows that have come out of the traps as well. Um, but yeah it's been mostly green saw tails and and mollies to be honest. So that's the one trap and that's the kind of pool that I've been that I've put the trap in. You can see it's hardly any water movement there. Um, and that's where they've all been sitting. Okay, now this is the other side, um, and you can see this is what it looks like. That's where it's flowing, flowing from the calm side that I showed you earlier to this side, yeah. And all the swords that I've caught so far have just been off to the side. You can see there's the one trap, and there's the other trap. Um, and I haven't taken a walk further down, which I could do, but there's just... I've already got so many of those swords and I don't want to put them back because they're invasive so um, we'll probably pack up shortly, pull those two traps out um, then get going. It's about another two hours or so till I get back home. I'll put them in a tank and then I'll finish off this video then. Hey everyone, so we're back from the uh, road trip. Um, going to collect uh, fish in the wild. Uh, it was an interesting day, it was a good day, um, a bit of a travel, so about four hours round trip and uh, the last time I was there, like I said, was six years ago, so I actually learnt a couple of things when I was there today and definitely will, be, will probably be going out there again because further up around, about probably about 100 metres further up, speaking to one of the locals, there's a, like a bigger open pond area and that apparently has got a lot more diversity in it, so... Uh, it may be worth doing that at some stage. But at the same time, um, I'd really appreciate feedback from you guys. If this is the kind of thing you'd like to see, if you'd like to see me go to different locations and try and collect uh, some fish in their natural habitat, let me know, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to go there. I've got another spot down south. Um, today's Sunday. I did try another spot. Uh, Saturday, myself and my son went south but it was from the rains the water was just really bad and the vegetation growth was really thick and we couldn't get down to the water in a lot of places so that day was a blowout and then today I went like I said I went north um, and went back to a spot that I knew had produced previously now for me the biggest surprise was six years ago I went there threw in and the little traps and and caught a lot of um, of the rainbows. Now in Queensland the, the regulations are I think it's 20, not 20 per person but 20 per like car so you can't take more than 20 of them but last time I was there there was that's that's basically that and um, uh, the rainbows I got a lot of those last time and then the smelt of course and this time around smelt again there was lots of smelt around the Australian smelt what was I suppose for me really concerning was the amount of um, invasive species that were around. Now, I brought back and I've put them in the tanks. I, I've had to make space. I didn't realize there were that many. Um, so the green swords, there's some mollies, there's some platies uh, that's, that, that I caught in those traps. And, and if you look at this video footage, this is the one of the, the, the tank that's really got the green swords in. 
and you can see there's a fair amount in them. They're really big swords as well, um, but there was, there was lots of them. I could probably have collected another hundred if we wanted to stick around and collect more, and I probably should have taken as much as I could out of the system, but when I go back, I'll, I'll take some more out. My challenge now, of course, is what do I do with these? Because uh, I don't necessarily want to keep a whole lot of swords in a hundred cube. Uh, the other thing is, I kept on saying um, the ornate rainbow, and it wasn't really the ornate rainbow, it was the crimson spotted rainbow that I was referring to. And I don't know why I had ornate in my head. I don't know if I'd done some reading up on the ornate, and that's why I kept on thinking, but it was the crimson. So I really wanted to get some rainbows today, and that, that was really the goal. Um, and I'm pleased that I have got some rainbows. They're in there now at the moment. And there's probably about four in there. Um, really one nice, really nice male, one nice female, and then two smaller ones. So I did get some rainbows. The underwater footage that we took, which I'll, I'll, I'll add in as well, um, there was actually quite a fair amount of rainbows around. They just didn't go into the traps. But they, you could see in the video footage there was quite a, quite a fair fair amount and and the crimson rainbows are really pretty as well they've got all the red cheek the reds like little cheeks or a little scale on the side the other thing that i didn't think when i got home and i put them in and then tried to decipher what i had splitting all the the evasive stuff out and then the natives to one side um it looks like it's a type of gungeon that i've got as well i need to go and look through the reference books and figure it out um, but it looks like I've got a gudgeon in there, or not one, I've got probably three little gudgeons in there. Um, and then I've also got the, what they call the hardy head. Um, got some of those in there as well. And if you look at this footage, you'll see, um, you can see uh, the fish that's in there at the moment. All of the fish traveled really well, with the exception of one little one that's bellying up here at the moment. But I'll leave it and see if it comes right. But that was the only one that didn't do well on the trip um, next time I'll take with little air pumps and and make sure that the water's aerated for the travel what I'd like to do now is I'm just going to add in some video here which is really the video around some of the underwater footage and what's interesting when you look at some of the underwater footage is is the swords and that just absolutely grazing off the algae loving the algae and, and it's the variety in the fish that come through the other thing was really cool to see is we picked up a shrimp as well on the underwater footage um, and apparently there are shrimps in that in that particular area that we were in and uh, next time I go I'll try and see if I can get some of those but you now it's probably a question of pulling nets along the weed edges and so forth but when I go again and if it's something that you guys want to see I'll go a little bit more prepared um, didn't have the right footwear to walk across the stones and so forth the other thing is uh, so please let me know in the comments if you want me to make more of these collecting videos happy to do so please don't ask me where the location was i'll be i'll be honest i'm not going to tell people the location because the last thing i want is people in there you know hordes of people going off there and trying to collect fish out of one particular area so um, I'm, I'm not going to disclose where the area is some people in australia will figure it out and that's fine but I'm not disclosing where the actual location was where I found those. Um, so yeah, have a, have a look at the video of In the Water. There's some really good footage. I'll let that run through for a bit. Um, let me know once again if this is the kind of videos you enjoyed. And then I will have a look at, if it is something you want, I'll have a look at doing possibly another one next weekend. And exploring further through that area that I was in today. It's a stunning spot place and the area and the it, it's just absolutely beautiful there it, it really is um and it's a pleasure going there so um, i don't mind going and doing a bit of walking and, and and seeing what we can find anyway guys have a fantastic weekend further um next week have a on your week have a good week stay safe look after yourselves till the next video urban fish keeper out <laughs>